and welcome back to the channel it's Jamika here and in this video I am going to be sharing with you guys how I made this gorgeous and lovely bubble dress that is tight at the waist region I will also be showing you how I made this beautiful and classy Zara cap from start to finish as you can see the back is free while the front is tight you can adjust it in such a way that the back can be tied as well just like so the front and the back can be tied at the same time the back alone can be tied while the front is free or you can tie it the boat whichever way you want it so guys if this is what interests you watch this video to the end and do not forget to subscribe like share and drop a nice comment as this will tremendously help grow our youtube channel keep watching this video and let's get started I am going to be using three yards of this orange duchess fabric. You can use any fabric of your choice. So I went ahead to fold my fabric into two like so. While folding it, make sure you fold enough fabric because this is a booboo. To determine the wideness, just use the measurement from your mid neck to your sleeve length. And then you can go ahead to take your gown length measurements like so. We will be cutting the back first so. From the center back, I am going to go in by half of my shoulder measurement, which is 7 inches, so I will mark it here. And from this 7 inches point, I am going to go down to how long I want this sleeve to be. So I'm marking it at 16 inches. This will serve as a guide while folding. Remember, midpoint to half of your shoulder measurement to where you want your sleeve to be. I added extra 1.5 inches for hemming of the sleeve. You can decide to make yours 2 inches, depending. Next is to rule a straight line like so this would serve as a guideline for taking measurements you can decide to make it half inch or one inch the next thing we are going to do is to place your tape rule on the guideline we marked earlier like so then go down by one inch after that you place your tape rule from your center back and mark out three inches after marking it out you extend the one inch line just the way i am doing in the video from the picture the neck is kind of standing so use your chalk and slightly curve it upwards like so after curving the neck go ahead and extend the one inch line that we marked earlier just the way i am doing in the video extend it to where you want your sleeve to reach and then use your ruler to rule a straight line like so after that i'm going to come to the end of this area here and from the shoulder line i'm going to come down by one inch because i want to have a kind of a shoulder slope so from this one inch i came down by i'm just going to use my ruler to connect it all the way to my neckline like so after that next is from this shoulder slope here you are going to come down by how wide you want your sleeve to be so i'm marking this at nine inches here as you can see i marked it at nine inches now from the top of my shoulder line i marked down to my bust point which is 10 inches and on this bust point line i am marking my bust round measurements divided by four 36 divided by four which is nine inches i marked it here like so and after that i used a ruler to connect the lines and rule a straight line so from the picture you will notice that this booboo has a curve at the knee region i think it's two to three inches above the knee length depending on your size my knee length is 39 inches and two inches above my knee length is 37 inches so i used my chalk to mark out 37 inches like so next is to determine how straight you want it to be after the curve and i used my hip measurement divided by four which is 44 divided by four 11 inches minus one inch 10 inches you can decide to minus two inches or you can use your exact hip measurement for yours i marked 10 inches and later decided to use 11 inches so i went ahead to mark it out like this make your lines visible enough and make sure that they intercept like so so that you won't find it hard to draw your curve later so to draw our curve from this sleeve line go in by four inches like so you can make it less or more depending on how you want your curve to be so i started drawing my curve from this curve here extend it to the knee area like so I went ahead to use my free hand to like sketch my curve how I want it to be. Just take your time and sketch your curve exactly the way you want it to be. You can reduce the curve like so. If you don't want it to be so obvious, you can go ahead to like make it bigger if you want it to be very obvious. Whichever one you feel like doing, after sketching it, you can then go ahead and use your curve to perfect the free hand sketch and make a better and neat curve before cutting. 
So the next thing is to come down to the knee region and extend the 10 or 11 inches that we marked earlier down to the hemming line. Over here, make a slight curve to connect the straight line to the curve we marked earlier so it doesn't have a sharp or a pointed mouth. Next is to mark out the gown length measurement. I already have my knee length at 37 inches so I will place my tape rule on that 37 inches and then take my gown length measurement which is 58 and half inches plus extra one and a half inches hemming allowance making it 60 inches so i marked it all through to the center like so after marking your gown length i'm going to go ahead and start cutting i started cutting from the neck from the air down to the sleeve and then from the sleeve i'm going to enter the curve please while cutting this side cut it carefully so you don't make mistake so just cut through to the curve and then cut straight down to the hemline so guys this is all for the drafting of the back pattern now for the front pattern i'm folding my fabric into two and then i placed the back pattern on it like so now with your tape rule go in by one and a half inches just the way i am doing in the video mark it all the way from the top to the end the center front is going to be having a stitch in the middle that is why i created this line here you can go ahead and draw a straight line there so now i'm I'm placing the center back piece on this line exactly that I marked here. Remember the line is one and a half inches away from the end of the fabric. If your fabric is kind of shifting, you can go ahead and pin the back piece on the front piece so it doesn't alter your measurements. Next, get your chalk and start tracing the front with the back piece. Here, I am carefully tracing the neck to make sure that the bolts are the same. Make sure you trace everything from the top to the end. With the back piece still on it, go ahead and start cutting. Now, I will go ahead and cut the top of the neckline. As you can see, I haven't cut the neckline of the front part pattern yet but i'm going to be cutting every other part as it is at the back into the front pattern i am cutting the armhole the curve and straight down to the hemming line go ahead and take off the back piece so that we can cut the front neckline now from the top of this fabric i am coming down by nine inches for the depth of the front neckline you can make your depth 10 inches if you don't want it as high as mine from the picture it's a high v neckline but it's kind of standing a little don't mind this line here it's a mistake remember we placed our tape rule like so and we went in by nine inches do not forget to go down by 10 inches if you don't want your as high as mine next is to place your tape rule from the top like so again and then go down by four inches mark it out and extend the line like so to form the slight curve at the front neckline place your tape rule here and mark out one inch like so from there make a slight curve just the way i am doing in this video after making the slight curve get your curve set place it very close to the curve and then down to the four inches we marked earlier use your chalk to extend the curve to the four inches line just the way i am doing in this video go further and stylishly extend it down to the nine inches neckline depth like so I didn't like the shape it was giving me so I went in again with my cuff set. This time around, ignoring the 4 inches line, I drew my cuff from the top directly to the 9 inches neckline depth like so. Remember not to draw this line in your own because it's a mistake. This line my index finger is pointing at is where we are cutting. So go ahead, start from here and carefully cut through. Now I'm going to measure where I want my slits to start from and I placed my tape on the shoulder to do this. So I'm marking it here at about 35 inches. This is where I want my slits to start from. So go ahead and mark yours wherever you want your slits to start from. Now I'll head over and stitch this area down on the sewing machine. So guys after making my stitch this is what it looks like. There is going to be an opening at the neck area and the other opening will be the slit at the front so now we are going to iron the neckline go ahead and iron it so that it will come out well so once you are done ironing it out like this you are going to use a hemi gum this is called a hemi gum and i'm going to be placing it inside my stitching allowance like this so i'm going to be putting it in between the fabric and the stitching allowance here 
and i will use the stitching allowance to cover it up so i'll go ahead and iron it down so that this will help gum the fabric with the stitching allowance i will do the same thing to the other side as well if you do not have a hemi gum you can go ahead and use your needle and thread to pipe it all the way down but it won't look as neat as this so i'm going to continue with this process all the way to the end of this front piece even for this slit area make sure you use the hemming gum to hold down the stitching allowance and then iron everything out so once i'm done with that next is to pipe the neckline now i'm going to be using the same material to face or turn the neckline like so go ahead and cut out a piece that is 13 inches wide and 13 inches long after cutting it out go ahead and place it on it like so then this place my index finger is pointing is where you are going to be stitching on but before that i am going to be gumming it first with a light gum stay cut out a gum stay like this place it on the pieces and then use your iron to press and gum it down on the pieces after gumming it you get it and place it like this make sure the right side of the pieces is facing the right side of the front pattern i'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch this place my index finger is directing if it's confusing you do not worry i will go ahead and trim off this place before or after sewing it guys i'm done stitching it and i have trimmed it off this is what it looks like so i went ahead to turn it to the right side like so after turning it get your pressing iron and iron it carefully and neatly so that the neck would relax and come out perfectly now for the edge of this facing piece you can go ahead and weave it all round like so or you can turn it like this and hem it all round you can as well use your scissors to trim it to be in a circular shape like this after turning the front neckline i'm going to do the same for the back neck so to turn the back neckline get a piece and gum it just like we did for the front neckline place it the way i am placing it in this video you can turn it like this and then trim out the piece to look exactly like the back neck line this right here is for people on braid or a wig you might want to put a button or a hook at the back so that you won't be struggling to wear your dress so to create an opening for the button just place your tape through at the center back like so and then go down by six to seven inches then use your scissors and cut through later you can pipe or turn it with your bayers before fixing your button mine has no opening so i'll just go ahead and trace the back neck into the facing of the back before sewing it i will take it to my sewing machine and stitch where my index finger is directing guys i'm done stitching it and this is what it looks like you can go ahead and trim it with your scissors and just like we did for the front facing go ahead and weave it all around or you can hem it like so and do not forget to iron it as well so that it will come out neatly so this is what i have for the back and front piece now we are going to go ahead and stitch down the shoulder join the front and back shoulder area like so and go ahead and stitch down the shoulders after stitching the side you join this other side together too and go ahead and stitch it now i'm going to be showing you guys the second way to join your shoulders for a very neat and perfect finishing so watch closely place the front and back shoulder the way i am placing it in the video open up the back facing like so and sandwich it together thereby making sure that the front piece is in between the back piece and the back neck facing if you do not understand just watch closely and repeat exactly what i am doing after arranging it i am going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch it all the way through so guys i'm done joining the shoulders and this is what it looks like I will use iron to straighten and stretch the stitch area the facing area is neat i have joined the other shoulder as well and everything came out nice so i'll just go ahead and use the one and a half inches sewing allowance i added to fold the sleeve after folding the sleeves i will go ahead and join the both sides arrange and stitch it from the sleeve side all the way down to the hemline then turn to the other side arrange it properly fold the sleeve area and then stitch down the side all the way from here through the curve and to the end after stitching the both sides next is to hem the dress remember we added one and a half inches for the folding of this bubble dress so go ahead and use it to 
hem the dress all around so guys this is what it looks like our bubble dress is ready take a look at the sleeve i folded it even the sides i have joined it and this is what it looks like everything came out nice you can see our slit in the front it's very neat the hemi gum gave it a neat finishing look at the edge of our dress i have folded it as well and everything is very neat i will just turn it to the right side and i will use my pressing iron to straighten it and give it a perfect and neat finishing now for this our neck facing you can use needle and thread to pipe it but the burst is using hemi gum so place a hemi gum in between then use your iron to hold it down together so it doesn't shift now for the part that i know everyone has been waiting for which is how to make the waist tight i will go ahead and turn to the back of this dress please guys before we forge ahead i have a special announcement for you all subscribe to this channel and on your notification bell because i will be posting the video Video on how I made the Zara cap. You don't want to miss out on the tutorial on how I made this Zara cap. So, guys, on your notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I post this video on how I made this Zara cap so that you won't be left out. Thanks, guys, and let's continue. I have gone ahead to cut out these four pieces that we are going to be using for our belt. It's about 30 inches long, depending on your waist measurement, and four and a half inches wide. The length you'll be using depends on how big you are. Just make sure it's long enough to go around your waist. So I'm going to head over to my sewing machine and sew this like a belt. I'll sew it on one side and then turn it out to the right side. So I went ahead to do that and this is what I have here. This is what I was explaining earlier. Just turn it like so and then stitch through this place my index finger is pointing and then stitch the other end before turning it out to the right side after turning it to the right side you can go ahead and iron it with your pressing iron so that it will be neat after pressing it do not forget to turn your dress to the back side this is our dress and i've turned it over to the back from the top of my shoulder i am going to measure down to my waist that is your waist length and my waist length measurement is 15 inches so go ahead to mark it here make sure you are making this mark on the front please ignore the double line just mark yours at your waist length move over to the other side and repeat the same thing after marking it you go in with your ruler and create a straight line across this point like so after that you divide your waist measurement into four so my waist measurement divided by four is seven and a half inches so i'll place my tape roof from the center and mark out seven and a half inches and again i will take it to the other side and also mark seven and a half inches like so make sure is at your waist measurement so after marking it i'm going to bring in my belt and place them on this point that i made so I'll place one belt like this make sure you are placing it exactly the same way i am placing mine place it there like this and use your office pin to pin it only to the front part make sure you are pinning it only to the front so i will pin it down here after pinning for this side i will bring in the other belt and i'm going to pin it at the same point i have here only on the front part please make sure that you are not mistakenly pinning it to the back as well so now when you wear this dress you are going to tie this belt around your waist and that is what is going to give this dress that tight effect at the front waist now to create the tight effect for the back turn it to the back like so and repeat the same thing we did for the front so for the back waistline take out two inches or one and a half inches from your waistline mine is 13 and a half inches so go ahead and mark out whatsoever you got in yours like so after marking it use your ruler and make a straight line next place your tape rule at the center and mark out your waist measurement divided by four also mark it at the other end too and then bring in your belt and pin it down like so make sure you are pinning it only to the back after pinning the both sides so i'll head over to my sewing machine and stitch these areas in place so guys i'm done stitching for the back and it's now firm let me turn over and show you the front look at the front very neat as well now let me show you how to make both the front and the back tight at the same time now when you wear it on your body you are going to be tying the back right side of the belt and the front right side of the belt together also tie for the front and back left too that is what is going to create that tight effect at the front and back waist 
now if you want to make only the back tight just when you wear it you are going to take the back belt and tie it round your waist it's going to create that waist tight effect at the back only like right, our dress is ready so this is what it looks like when you tie the front and back waist together do not forget to all your notification bell for the tutorial on how i made the zara cap please give this video a thumbs up drop a nice comment and share with your friends also drop your questions in the comment section thank you so much for watching till now see you in my next video see you guys in my next video bye